Hi students, welcome back. In the previous class, we learned about Parshi Revolt, Vedatambi and Paliyatachin. Today, we will learn about Kerala becomes a part of the world market. Taking up the administrative control, the British could gain Kerala merchandises at cheap price and sell out their industrial products at high prices. With this, Kerala's self-sufficient village economy was destroyed. Foreign trade spread across the region under the rule of the British and Kerala became a part of the world market. The trade laws that existed in Malabar, Kochi and Travancore were amended by the British in their favour. They introduced unified coinage and metrology systems. Roads, bridges and railways were built to improve transportation facilities targeting the carriage of goods. For better trade facilities, they developed the port at Kochi, Kolikod and Alapura. Next, changes in land relations. The British rule made drastic changes in the pattern of land ownership enjoyed by different sections of people in the society. Local chieftains and landlords were considered as the owners of land and the tax they had to pay to the British was predetermined. Local chieftains and landlords collected tax from the tenants in excess and evicted them. As a result, the life of the tenants in Malabar became pathetic. The tenants got limited right over the land by the implementation of Malabar Tenants Act of 1929. It was based on the report of the Logan Commission that was entrusted with enquiring about the Mapla uprisings. Changes in land relations started in Travancore from the time of Marthandavarma itself. Land of the Madambis were converted into Pandaramvaga property. The government of Travancore made a landmark proclamation in 1865 granting the tenants ownership of the lands they cultivated. It is known as Pandarapattavilambaram. The Janmi Kudian Act passed in 1896 also granted land ownership to the tenants in Travancore. Hence, majority of the tenants in Travancore became the land owners at least in nine. In return, they were compelled to pay huge amount of tax to the government. In short, the tenants in Travancore also suffered a lot due to the tax burden. In Kochi, the Tenancy Act was enacted in 1914. Next, commercialization of agricultural sector. The British rule made great changes in the pattern of agriculture. Kerala products were in great demand in foreign markets. Coffee, tea, cardamom were cultivated in large plantations in hilly areas with the beginning of other crops. Paddy production also declined. The result was food shortage. To overcome this situation, tapioca cultivation extended to large areas. At the same time, teak plantation was started in Nilabur under the guidance of Connolly. Most of the plantations were owned by the British. The rulers of Kochi and Travancore facilitated transportation and leased out foreign lands to the British to start estates. Gradually, Kerala became a hub of cash crop production. Next, growth of plantation and traditional industries. The British started plantation industries in Kerala with their own capital for processing and exporting cash crops. Tea and coffee factories and rubber processing units 
were set up in high ranges in the meantime traditional industries related to coconut coir cashew nut handloom and beedi were also developed oil mills using diesel engines were started at many places in kerala alappuzha was the hub of coconut oil industry in 1859 james dara from ireland started a coir factory in alappuzha cashew nut processing and exporting factories were established in kollam tile factories in farooq kollam and ollur and handloom industries in kannur and kolikod started functioning bd companies were started in kannur next rise of modern industries modern factories were established in kerala by the middle of the 20th century majority of them were in travancore and kochi rulers of travancore adopted policies promoting modern industries the british provided technical and financial support to the industries the establishment of pallivasal hydroelectric project propelled the development of modern industries the main factories started during that period are punalur paper mills fat kalamacheri kundara ceramics rubber works Tata oil mills and Alagappa textile mills banks were started in Kerala as institutions for accumulating capital and dealing with financial affairs the nadungadi bank was the first private bank in Kerala later the imperial bank the indian national bank and the chartered bank came into existence let's review about today's topic first pandara patta vilambaram changes in land relations started in travancore from the time of martanda varma land of madambis converted into government property this proclamation is called pandara patta vilambaram next commercialization of agriculture coconut products were high demand in foreign markets plantations were started in hilly areas gradually kerala became a hub of cash crop production next rise of modern industries the establishment of hydroelectric project punalur paper mills tata oil mills were started along with that banks were started Nedungadi Bank was the first private bank. These are the main points included in this topic. Hope all of you understood today's topic. Thank you.